because it's a little boring because it's steady, but it's always steady. <laughs> I said it's not the up and down ride. And you don't have to worry about losing everything because it's backed by real estate. So if you if you know anybody, by all means, send them my way. Right? I, I don't ask them. I always just ask for – that's that's my, my technique. I ask them, and if you know anybody, let us know. And, and I, usually the conference continues on. I think it's interesting, too. And, I mean, I'm sure your portfolio is the same way of, of those kind of lenders. But with us, these are not like multi-millionaire people. They're – they're they're not conglomerates. They're they're just normal salt every, of the earth yeah, people. salt of the earth people that live in everyday America that you would not necessarily know even have any money socked away at all. Yeah. But they but they those are the ones that like that steady eddy, you know, consistent income that they get from from investing with a real estate investor. Yeah. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Imagine what you will feel like having all the private money you would ever want for your real estate deals. Well, my guests today have flipped 583 houses using private money. And I'm not talking about hard money or hard money brokers. I'm talking about private money. My guests today are Glenn and Amber Swarm. Glenn and Amber are about to share with you how private money absolutely transformed their real estate investing business. They're also about to reveal where and how they find all these private money lenders. If you want private money for your deals, don't miss a second of this episode. Let's dive in right now. And today I'm so excited to have some very dear friends of mine and Carol Joy's. We're in mastermind groups together and wow, have they got experience to share with you on raising a bunch of private money, how they've gone about it. In addition to all that, they have already flipped over 1,000 houses with complete success, and they valued it over $100 million and counting. So let me tell you something. They know a thing or two, you reckon, about real estate investing. Now, they started their career in real estate really out of sheer desperation. They had like over $80,000 in credit card debt. Maybe you can relate to that. Hope not. Anyway, they had a lot of credit card debt and they needed to make a lot of money like really fast to get out from under that huge burden that was like keeping them awake every night. So what did they do? In 2007, they flipped their first house. They made $17,000 on that first one. Then they went to their second house and then that one they doubled. They profited $33,000 in 33 days. So they knew that they were onto something. So as I said, they've now flipped over 1,000 houses. Private money has been a big part of their success. Uh, they didn't have really any formal education in real estate investing, but their knowledge comes from hands-on, doing it day in and do it, you know, day in and day out, real life experiences. Well, what some people call the school of hard knocks and a strong desire for a better life for themselves and their family. So you know what? They kick to the curb, the nine to five. They're making their own rules. They're setting their own schedule, and they are enjoying wealth and freedom. And guess what? By listening to my good guests today, you will be on your road to enjoying the same kind of wealth and freedom that they do. And so I want to welcome to the show my good friends, Glenn and Amber Swarm. Glenn and Amber, welcome to the show. My first question, y'all, is, you know, your first flip that you did, uh, 17,000 profit. The second flip you did, 33,000 profit. Did private money have anything to do with those deals or was those different kinds of deals? No. You know, we started in, we bought our first rental in 03 and then we started to start flipping houses in 07. feels like forever ago. And we mm -hmm. used a bank for the first note because you'd get money pretty easy back then. And then we use credit cards to do the renovation. 
<clears throat> and we did our first two houses that way. We right. thought we had the formula figured out. Then we got in trouble because all of a sudden 2008 comes and the, the bank and the broker that I knew said, hey, Glenn, I don't have that program anymore for you. I said, well, you can get it for me. We're friends. He goes, dude, I can't get it for me. He said, those programs are gone. And the problem was we had how many? Two houses under contract right then. We didn't know how we were going to buy them. Yeah, we were under contract, had deposits, and they pulled the money out. And these were good deals. And we're like. And we had good credit. Well, we were screwed. There yeah. was, you know, hard money wasn't really a thing back then besides from Guido, the killer pimp. And we were trying to figure out how to. We're like, I didn't know. I didn't know what to do on those deals. And it, it was about that time. So he, the funny story, Jay, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I want to make sure I tell you. Your voice is very distinct. And when I first met you, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've heard that voice before. And I heard it. I don't know where I got it, but I had a CD from some other guru. And you were a speaker. And somehow your name wasn't on it. Like I didn't hear, there was no way to contact you. It wasn't like social media was big back then, right? So it wasn't so easy just to Google you and find you. It wasn't, that wasn't really a thing. I remember hearing this voice and you talked all about how you were raising private money and how you put together this lender packet and all this stuff. And I'm like, what's a heck of an idea? And so not knowing anything about even how to reach you, we figured it out. It, 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 it was hard. It, took, it was hard to figure it out. Like I so wish I just had a formula from you. That would have been easier. You were an inspiration <laughs> you were. without even knowing it. Yeah, it took us a long time to do it on our own. But you were an inspiration to figure it out. And we we found, you know, in our first lender, we actually had her use her home equity loan. Yeah, she was a girlfriend that I that I went to the gym with. And, you know, we're like, you know, who do we know that has money? And the funny thing is there's money all around us if we're, if we're really being honest. And, and even people that you don't think have money might have some money somewhere. Yeah. But she had, uh, she had some equity in our house. And Glenn's like, you know, you got a pretty nice house there, and you guys have put a lot of sweat equity into it. Do you do you think you have any? Ec you know, can you get a home equity loan? Well, long story short, she got a home equity loan. Um, at the time, she was paying three or four percent. I forget the exact numbers, but three or four percent. And at that time, money was a little more expensive, so we were paying fourteen percent. So she was making ten percent on money that wasn't even hers to begin with. She put her kids through private school education. She's still an investor to this day. 15 years later, yeah. On money that wasn't even hers. That one launching pad, Jay, took us from, we started to use that formula, not just home equity, but other people's stuff. We started to figure it all out. It took it took a long time to figure out a lot of things I know you teach now that I wish I, wish I, I, wish I could have just, I wish I could have had that would have made my life a lot simpler. And um, we we raised about $5 million in private private investor funds that we use that to this day to, to flip our house. We don't use our own money hardly ever. And then another one of the houses that we bought really early on, it was probably one of our first five deals, the Riggie's house, or the house on Riggie. Um, we're at the closing table, and the people that we bought the house on, um, they were making 60, 70 grand on the sale of the house. So we're sitting there at the closing table, and I said, hey, what you going to do with that profit? <laughs> So they ended up being one of our private investors with that money, and then they've since turned over all of their um, they IRA put their money in a self-directed IRA, and they're yeah. they're all invested with us too. So we've had those investors, those same investors, for fifteen years. So long, long answer, but yeah, that's how we got started. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let me comment on. I mean, you just y'all just shed a lot of uh, shared a lot of nuggets right there in a very short period of time. Yeah. And uh, let me unpack some of what you just said, because what you just said is really, really important. First of all, that's pretty cool that you knew me before you knew who I was. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that, that's, that's, that's pretty neat. But your all story out of um, desperation of you thought you had, you thought you still had your relationship with your bank for your deals and you didn't. Same thing happened to me in January 2009. Um, same story. I had been borrowing money from the same bank for my real estate deals from 2003 to 2009. I'd never heard of private money. I didn't know anything about that. And I called up my banker and I'd already put the earnest money down on two houses. I thought I had my line of credit, just like you thought you had your line of credit. And then I had a wake up call when I picked up the phone and called him and found out that all that was gone. Well, you know, the global financial crisis was going on and it's like the spigot turned off overnight. But you know, you experienced the same thing I experienced. And that is you had a decision to make. 
And that was, were you just going to roll over and quit and just throw up your hands? Or were you going to continue to keep your shoulder to the wheel and look for a better and quicker way to fund your deals that puts you in the driver's seat? And this world of private money, as you've experienced and I've experienced, does just that. It puts you in the driver's seat. You set the rules. You know, when you were borrowing money from the banks and I was borrowing money from the banks, the banks made the rules. And of course, we make the rules now. We yeah. set the interest rate, you know, the frequency of payments and et cetera. Now, another thing that I want to really bring out and bring to the forefront is to what you all just shared. And you just talked you just talked about how one of your friends or connections or whatever had a had a uh, home equity line or got an equity line of credit, and then they pulled down on that and funded your deal with their equity line of credit. And what's what's interesting about that is I just I just finished presenting a webinar uh, teaching people where they can actually get access to funds to be a private lender. And that strategy right there that you talked about is one that I just taught on a webinar that I just finished about an hour ago. And what's so cool about that uh, equity line of credit strategy where an individual, of course, you know, we're talking about private money. We're not talking about hard money or hard money brokers. We're talking about doing business with individuals. And what's so cool about that strategy is that when someone, when a private lender, an individual goes and gets this equity line of credit and then loans it out to us real estate investors, then that is called an infinite rate of return. And the reason it's called an infinite rate of return to the private lender is because you can't calculate the rate of return that you're earning on money that you're not, it's not your money that you're loaning out. Right. It's like they're loaning out the bank's money, making money on the bank's money. So it's like, you know, they're pocketing the spread like, you know, it's like who owns the biggest buildings downtown in the cities? The banks. The banks, sure. the banks do the same thing. Yeah. The bank ain't loaning out their money. Right. <laughs> that's very true. The, the sure. bank's loaning out, you know, all of us people that's put money in the bank and they pay us nothing, right? right. And they loan the money out. Uh, so same thing. And, you know, since you brought this strategy up, I want to share that there are at least two other strategies that's very similar to equity lines of credit, and it's called leveraging an asset that you have. So, you know, a private lender can go get money from an equity line of credit. They can also, as and I'm curious to know, Amber uh, and Glenn, if you have any private lenders, have you had any private lenders use the arbitrage strategy called getting a portfolio loan set up, whereas they have stocks. Now, I'm not talking about retirement funds in the stocks. I'm talking about just they're invested in stocks and they like their stocks. They don't want to get rid of their stocks or mutual funds, but they can leverage that asset by opening up a portfolio line of credit, not margin. I'm not talking about borrowing on margin, but get a portfolio line of credit. They can keep their stocks. And you know, in a portfolio line of credit, People can set up a line of credit up to 50% of the value of their stock brokerage account, borrow that money just like an equity line, lend it out to real estate investors and pocket the spread. Have you had any private lenders do that? You know, I don't think so. I think early on we had one, one of our investors who's with us now who's, who's all in self-directed IRA. I feel like early on he, we talked about that, but he never did that. So no. Not a strategy we've used, but that's a great idea. Yeah. There's another one that's also arbitrage, and this is more popular. So I haven't had any, I had any of my private lenders do this, but I'm starting now to bring it up in conversation as helping them think as to where they can get investment capital. And that is whole life insurance policies. Sure. sure. You know? Uh, have you talk talk about how that strategy works? So we we have not done that, but certainly the same thing. If you have a cash value built up in whole life policy, you can borrow against that, right? And I don't know the exact percentage of how much you can borrow against, but you can borrow against that. And again, you know, there's some there's something powerful about making money on money that's not yours, right? <laughs> Overcharging that money—it's a powerful strategy. Wherever you know, and that's that's again, that's not something we've actually used with our lenders, but 
I think I think in today's day and age, you bring up some. This is why this is why you're the private money authority, right? You bring up ideas on how to help people. In the early days, we exactly. helped them. Yeah, we helped them say, "Hey, you got money in the IRA. Let's turn that into a self-directed IRA." Like, what's that? We had to educate them, and once they understood, wait, I can give you money. I can, wait, that's that's in stocks. I go, it won't be anymore. Really? So you know, once we educate them, then they can convert those funds. Just like you're saying, you can find. You know, the more ways you have. The more tools in your bag, the more the easier you get the job done, right? So. Absolutely. Well, I want us to. I want you. I want you and Amber to drill down on why it is important to know what self-directed IRA companies are and why it's so important to be able to have a conversation with a potential private lender about how they can use their retirement funds. But before you answer that question and and teach from experience about the value of self-directed IRAs. Let's give away a gift right now. I'm so excited about this uh, recent private money guide that I finished writing. It's called the seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. Listen, if you want funding for your deals without relying on banks and hard money lenders and such, you want to download this guide for free. This will get you on the fast track to private money and getting more money than you can use to actually invest in your deals. Download this private money guide for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's jayconner.com forward slash money guide. Download it for free. Get on the fast track to private money. So Amber and Glenn, talk to us about self-directed IRAs. What in the world is that? Why is it important to know about it? And then how do you work with your private lenders and self-directed IRAs? So self-directed IRA is just what it says, right? It's a way that you can take, normally when you people have an IRA or if they have a 401k that converts to an IRA or whatever, if they have any kind of an IRA, they have money in there that's this growing tax deferred or tax free if it's a Roth. There's different verse. Don't want to dive down that down that rabbit hole. But traditionally, people have always expected that money goes in the stock market in some way, shape, or form. <clears throat> well, that that doesn't have to be the case once you educate people. So they can go through a third party fiduciary company. There's several of them. Um, there's a few good ones. <laughs> there's other ones I don't know. So there's a few good ones. Equity Trust is one that we've used over the years. Um, and a, and a couple others, but that these companies, these fiduciary companies, they will set up the account for your investor and they will keep them compliant with the IRS because the IRS isn't like you messing around with your retirement funds if they're allowing you to grow tax deferred or tax free. They don't like you messing around with that unless they have a few guidelines. And a few guidelines are who you can lend to without going down again too much detail. There's certain people you can lend to in the family, you can lend. On the family tree, you can lend this way, but not this way, or something like that. So there's a few things you can do, but there's structures around that. But these companies keep you compliant, so that way they help you the right paper to keep you compliant. So the IRS leaves you alone, and they're okay with you using that because they don't want you just to have your retirement money and do it. Now, as a self-directed IRA, you don't have to put it just in real estate. You can invest in restaurants. You can invest in a, whatever you want. Actually, there's a lot of things you can invest the money in. In non-secured and secured assets, um, whatever you can even put it back in stocks if you want to control the control the flow of it yourself. You can do that yourself inside your self-directed IRA. But those companies will keep you compliant. And to your third part of your question, Jay, you said why is it important to educate? Well, that's early on. That's what we did. We our our very first investor. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. First investor was the real was uh, Janie with the home equity. home equity. Then we had the investor that had. He was in the stock market, and he had 800, 850 or 880,000 stock market, and when the market crashed in 08, he lost half of it. And he happened to get one of my packets that I heard from this guy who had an accident, just like you, Jay, and I, I, uh, I, I put this packet together, and I sent it to a bunch of friends. He called me and said, what is this thing you're doing? I hadn't talked to him in 10, or not, not 10 years, two or three years, and I said, well, listen, I, you know, I'm doing real estate, blah, blah, blah. So my money's all tied up, tied up in the market and it's all in my IRA. And I said, huh, 
I started doing some research and I found out I can put that in a self-directed IRA. So through research, I found out how to help them do that. And then now we help our investors do that. So I help them set up the self-directed IRA. There's some paperwork they have to do. We help them with that. And actually, it's pretty simple. At some, some companies are complicated. Some are simple. But that's it. And now, instead of us paying the investor their money and their interest back, it goes into their self-directed IRA. And that's what that is. So that's how that whole program works. It's important to educate them because, again, just like you said, the more you educate people on how they can use – how do people say to you, Jay, well, I don't have any money to invest. I don't have any money to invest. Well, do you have an, do you have an IRA? Well, yeah, that's invested. Yeah, but do you want to earn more? Well, what? Yeah, like Amber said, do you, do you have a home equity? Once we educate them, they're like, oh, oh. People don't know what they don't know. Right. So. Well, and I'm so glad you shared that. I mean, here's the actionable item. Well, before I give the actionable item um, to our listeners, let me just share this. So right now, Carol Joy and I have about eight and a half million dollars in private money deployed and invested in a bunch of different house projects. Got a bunch of flips going on right now. Here's the, and I don't share that number to brag. I share that number to give a fact. So we have 44 private lenders. Eight and a half million dollars is the total amount. And guess what? Over half, over 50% of that money that's invested in our deals came from and is coming from individuals who have moved their money over to a self-directed IRA company and are now loaning that money to us on our deals. And their money that they're earning is either tax deferred or tax free. In fact, we've got one private lender of those 44 that earned in just one year $65,000 tax free. And that's because he had a Roth IRA in his self directed IRA. So the actionable item, now that you know why it's so important, the actionable item is that if you want to attract a lot of private money, then you need to establish a relationship with a self-directed IRA company. Uh, my favorite company today is Quest Trust out of Houston, Texas. They have phenomenal service. All my private lenders that are using their retirement funds um, now have their account at Quest. And when I have a deal for funding and Quest Trust, actually the website is questtrust.com. When, uh, when I have a deal that's needed funding, then what happens is one of my private lenders, if they're using their retirement money and they have their account at Quest Trust, Quest Trust funds my deal in three business days, three business days. And that's so important because you'll get more offers accepted when you can actually close quicker, right? So that's why it's so important to have that relationship established. Um, so, you know, speaking of self-directed IRAs, I'm going to share with you, Amber and Glenn, one of my favorite ways to start a conversation. So I'm going to ask you this question in just a second. Well, I want you to answer it in just a minute. The question is, how do you start a conversation with a potential private lender that, you know, is in your warm market, you got some kind of, you know, association with? How do you start that conversation? I'm going to share first how I start it, yeah. and then I want to hear how you start it. Sure. I love, I love questions, right? And of course, the person that's asking the question is controlling the conversation as long as the person you're asking actually gives an answer, right? So my favorite way to start a conversation with a potential private lender, and they don't even know they're a potential private lender, and I don't either. I'm just loving talking and teaching. My favorite question is, and I love questions that start with, did you know? Did you know? Or I'm already peaking curiosity when I said, did you know? So I'll just weave into the conversation. I'll say, by the way, did you know there's a way people can make unlimited money per year tax-free? And then I shut up. And of course they don't know. Nobody, unless, unless they know about this world already, they don't know there's a way to make unlimited money per year tax-free. Of course they say no. And I said, well, have you ever heard about self-directed IRAs? 
And there's a 99.9% .9 chance they're going to say no. They never heard about self-directed IRAs. And then I'll start teaching with my teacher hat on what self-directed IRAs are, how it works, uh, and et cetera. How do you all like to start conversations with, uh, with someone about private money? Usually I'm in a conversation about their investment, right? So where, where they're currently invested. I'm kind of like just having a conversation. I'll just say, where, where do you guys have your money at? Where, what do you invest in? Like Amber and I are all in real estate. What do you, what do you win? And typically most people come back and say, I'm, I'm in the stock market. I've got my retirement there, whatever. Great. And I find out if it's current, if it's active or not, because it's an active 401k. I don't think you can change that over to a self direct IRA. So I, if, if they say I have some IRAs, I'll say, I enjoyed that ride. What do you mean? I said, well, you like the ride of the up and down and the, not really. Great. Just so you know, I, you know, I don't know if you're open to it all, but I know uh, ways you can make, you know, 10% guaranteed month after month. Investing with someone like us, it's a little boring because it's steady, but it's always steady. <laughs> I said it's not the up and down ride. And you don't have to worry about losing everything because it's backed by real estate. So if you, if you know anybody, by all means, send them my way. Right? I, I don't ask them. I always just ask for, that's, that's my, my technique. I ask them, and if you know anybody, let us know. And, and I, usually the conversation continues on. I think it's interesting, too. And I mean, I'm sure your portfolio is the same way of, of those kind of lenders. But with us, these are not like multimillionaire people. They're 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 not conglomerates. They're they're just normal salt every, of the earth yeah, people. salt of the earth people that live in everyday America that you would not necessarily know even have any money socked away at all. Yeah. But they but they those are the ones that like that steady eddy, you know, consistent income that they get from from investing with a real estate investor. Yeah. My experience is the same. I mean, I do have one private lender that has right at a million dollars with us. So that one private lender accounts for one eighth yeah. of all of our private money. Uh, we have another private lender that's got uh, about 650,000 with us. But, you know, I got a lot of private lenders that have 50,000, right? 30,000, 200,000. And like you say, these are everyday people. You know, at my live event, which is now titled the Private Money Academy Conference, one of the sessions I have at the live event is I'll have a panel of about 10 to 12 private lenders that Carol Joy and I use that live right here in the local area. And so we'll have them up there on stage and I'll interview them and I'll ask them questions such as, you ever heard of private money before I told you about it? Of course, the answer is always no. You ever heard of self-directed IRAs before we taught you about it? Of course, the answer is always no. And I asked the audience in attendance to make notes of commonality. You know, what are some trends that these private lenders have in common? And some things that they always notate, we talk about it on the next morning at the event. They always say, well, they never knew about private money until you taught them. They never knew about self-directed IRAs until you taught them. And thirdly, they're all regular people just walking around like us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. You know, Jay, I want to circle back for one second. One thing that I learned, using the, using the self-directed IRAs, most people, unless they're over, what is it, uh, 72 or whatever, whatever age they have to start taking withdrawals, most people, obviously, they're not – they that you can grow your own private lender base by growing your your investors base. So, you know, our investors started with 440,000, now has about a million dollars with us here 15 years later. He's made he's taken some distributions, but we've been able to grow our own base by making interest, paying it back. Now he has more to lend to us next time because it's in a self-directed IRA and he wants to lend it back to us. So when you create your own, you know, through growing and through growing your business and growing their money, you grow your money. But they tell their friends about it. They, that always works too. <laughs> yeah. That always works too. Based on what you just said, Glenn, I've got a friend. Um, his name is Ray. And he started uh, a little while back with us as a, a private lender, just using his retirement account. He worked at civil service for years. He's retired. And um, he had his retirement money in an annuity. And over a seven-year period, earned 3%. Not 3% per year, 3% over the seven years. So we go to church together and he came to me and he says, Jay, what in the world can I do with this money? I said, it's simple. Invest with me 
and you won't earn 3% over seven years, you'll earn 8% every year. Well, here's to your point. He started at $80,000. He now has in his retirement account over $200,000 based off of the interest that he accrues and earns. Of course, we structure a lot of our deals where there's no monthly payments. I mean, what real estate investor wouldn't love to buy a house, bring none of your own money to the closing table, bring home a big check and make no monthly payments at all. And then when you sell it, cash out, pay your private lender back the principal amount and, you know, along with the, with the, um, with the interest that they earn. But um, yeah, I mean, like you say, it's like they start out at a, at a certain level. It grows. You have more private money at your disposal. And there's one thing I've learned. Let me ask you a question. When you have a new private lender starting with you too, do they always have more than they tell you? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they usually keep their, yeah, unless, unless it's a good friend or family, they keep their cards pretty close to their chest. And so they're, te test this out, they're yeah. testing it. And I, we, we've often in the early days, just we've, we have, uh, we haven't had to raise money. No, well, we actually have new ones this past year, but, um, we we will tell them to test us. Test us on one deal, 100, 200 grand, whatever it might be. You know, test us out, see if you like us. If I know they have more, just test us out. Let let us, let us earn it. If you like the way this whole process feels, then we'll go on. Simple as that. I keep it real low key because at the time I probably only need I only need money for one deal probably. <laughs> so that's usually all I need. Right? If they say give me a million bucks, it's hard to just deploy a million dollars if you're trying to buy four or five houses. It's difficult to deploy that at any one given time. So it's better to spend. well. And you know, I know you all experienced the same thing I did. And anyone that does private money the way I do it and the way you all do it, you're going to run into a problem pretty quickly. And that is you're going to have more money at your disposal than you can put to work. But you know what? That's a pretty good problem. I'd rather have too not much money to ready to go than not enough. What'd you say, Amber? Not a bad problem to have. <laughs> no, not a bad problem. So, I know our listeners want to stay in touch with you, but and I think you got a new book out. You got an amazing podcast that I absolutely love. I want people to learn about your podcast so they can follow you. I want them to learn about your new book. But before you plug them into um, to the book and the podcast and all that, one more question: What is your all's favorite? And there's many, but what's your all's favorite method for raising private money? So. I would say our, our our favorite method, and what we teach our students too, is really what you taught us, Jay. Our fa favorite method when we started, and we haven't done this for a while, we started by just sending out to our existing, just people that I knew, and I just sent a packet, and I, and I don't ask them for money. I say, if you know anybody, we pay a referral fee if you know anybody that might be looking out, and we have a packet, a portfolio that kind of shows what we've done, that kind of stuff. Now, it's just being who we are. I think just being who we are and being out there and being successful, you attract money. I have a I have a guy that I'm going to be uh, taking a couple hundred grand off his hands here next week. Matter of fact, we he he saw a new show that that came out called The Big Flipping Break. It's a new show that's uh, that's airing, and he was on. He was my private my personal trainer back seven years ago. And every once in a while, there'd be a text here and there, but we really haven't stayed in touch. And he reached out. His exact words were, you know, because he spent a year training with me, so he knew he was in my home. He knew me. He said, you know, I got a couple hundred grand sitting on the sidelines. If anybody that I trust with that money, it's you. Could you tell me about, you know, are you taking out any more private lenders? So I think just being who you are and and letting people know what you do if you're a real estate investor. If you don't tell anybody what you do and you're not looking for money, then you'll never raise it. But also having integrity and operating, operating with integrity and, and having that good reputation of always taking care of our investors has been a really good Absolutely. Part of it. But I think like for new people, especially like right now we have it coming to us. We don't really have to ask for it too much anymore. But right. for new people, one of the keys for us in the beginning was taking that side door approach, like Lynn was saying, because it takes the pressure off of just saying, hey, you know, can I borrow money from you? Or, or hey, do you have yeah. any money? Yeah. It's, hey, who do you know of? Here, here's what I've got going on. And I know you have a great circle of friends. Who do you know of that that might be interested in something like this? And taking that side door approach was was really helpful. Yeah, for sure. You know what? Um, I had the same experience and that was my very first private lender. I told him I needed his help uh, to refer people to me. And the next day he had $250,000. Right? Yeah. Yeah. My, <laughs> yeah. My first guy called me and said, well, 
what about me? I said, and I, I didn't give it to you right away. I said, well, I don't know. What about you? You know? <laughs> and that's oh, what mercy. Well, look, I, I mean, you all, I could talk with you all all day about our favorite subject, but I know you're needing to jump and head to another appointment. So please share right now your new book, the podcast. Uh, how can people follow you? Because I know they want to hear more. Yeah, we do have a lot going on. So the best way to find us is just to go to glennandamber.com. And that has links to our, our book, our TV show, our podcast, all of our social media platforms. Our workshop. I mean, you name it, it's it's on that website. So glennandamber.com. Yeah, we'd love to connect. So let's spell that out. Let's spell that out for them. So that's www.glenn, G-L-E-N-N, and A-N-D, Amber, A-M-B-E-R.com, glennandamber.com, and that'll get you all plugged in. Go ahead, Glenn. You were saying something. No, that was it. Just I, whatever she said. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, look, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on Raising Private Money. Jay, thanks for having us and thanks for doing what you do, man, because you inspired us 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And you didn't even know it. I didn't even know who you were until I heard your voice and went, huh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. I remember that voice all those years. So thank you, my friend. Thanks so much, Jay. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Awesome. God bless y'all. I love you. That's from me and Carol Joy and look forward to seeing you soon at another Mastermind meeting. See you awesome. soon. See you soon. All right. There you have it, my friend. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And guess what? Just like you just heard from Glenn and Amber, I need your help. How do I need your help? I need you to share this show. If you found it to be valuable, share this show with at least one friend uh, that can make a difference. Uh, if you're watching on uh, or listening on iTunes, there's three dots in the upper right hand corner right there. Be sure to follow. So you don't miss out. And if you are watching on YouTube or any of our other video channels, be sure to um, subscribe. Click that bell on YouTube so you don't miss out on uh, any of the upcoming shows. And so we're looking forward to seeing you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.